Hey noobs, Mr. Frog here. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Estella's Nightmare, a new H action game developed by Goro Goro Games and published by Play Meow Games. The game is not censored by default on Steam, so you can get straight into the game right after installing. Now with that out of the way, the game opens with a pretty short and brief cutscene explaining how the main character, Estella, was tasked by her father to enter the cursed forest in search of an herb to cure his backache. While searching, she comes across a mysterious crystal that shatters and teleports her to another dimension. There, she finds a beautiful succubus sitting on a throne who tells her that people are occasionally sent here due to a mysterious magical anomaly. She then says that there is, however, a way for her to get home. There is a portal nearby that, if activated, can return her home. The only catch is that it's missing its portal cores to power it up. Thus, the only way of getting home is to head out and collect all the missing portal cores. The succubus also leaves you with one last gift and bestows upon you a powerful succubus tattoo that allows you to cast magic. Similar to a normal succubus though, you must power it up by performing certain activities which we'll look into later. And that basically sums up the main premise of the game. It is not really plot heavy, so aside from these very few scenes in the beginning, you don't really get a whole lot else. The game leaves you with many unanswered questions by the end, and never really goes into each character's motives or backstory. The plot is not really terrible by any means, but I personally would have liked to see a lot more here. As for the gameplay, each portal core will feature its own level. There's a main hub area where you can walk around, level up, and then choose a level. Once you've selected a level, you will be instantly teleported to the new zone, where you can walk horizontally with the arrow keys. The game also features a jump button, but it never really ends up serving a purpose, other than allowing you to jump while you walk, which I will admit is pretty fun. Now, as you walk through the level, you will occasionally encounter enemies. Once encountered, you will start a turn-based combat battle with them that plays out almost kind of like a rhythm game, where you will press space to block attacks and then cast spells when the enemy is open. And that is honestly really all there is to the combat. It's very one-dimensional, and while not horrible by any means, it does get a bit stale towards the end of the game. It is also very easy and basically almost impossible to lose. Even if you do end up losing, the worst that happens is you get a mini H scene that actually gives you HP then heals you and sends you back into combat. This is also the only way to gain XP in the game, but most players probably could finish the entire game without gaining even a single level, to be honest. You can also choose not to go back into combat during this mini H scene, though, which will then unlock a defeat H scene, which leads us onto the real content for this game, the H content. As mentioned earlier, losing in combat only unlocks a mini H scene, where you can choose to keep fighting if you wish. If you do decide to give up, you will then unlock a fully animated H scene involving either the boss or the monster that defeated you. Well, I will admit, I was not really impressed with the mini H scene content in the game. These fully animated H scenes have some fantastic illustration and animation work in them. They're definitely the highlight of the game for those interested in the H content. I'd say my only warning here is that a lot of the H content in the game revolves around monsters, beasts, and unfortunately tentacles with very little vanilla or soft content, so do keep that in mind if you're interested in this game. Now overall, Estella's Nightmare is a pretty decent game, but it definitely leaves a lot to be desired in many areas. Nothing in the game is outlandishly bad, but it also doesn't really do anything spectacular either. It is also very, very short, taking me literally under an hour to finish entirely. While I did have fun playing Estella's Nightmare, it felt kind of more like a demo than a completely finished game, to be honest. With all of that being said, Mr. Frog is unfortunately feeling a neutral to slightly negative recommendation for this game. If you are interested, I'd recommend at least waiting for a sale. Once again, thank you to everyone for all the support, and if you'd like to see more H game content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to check out the Mr. Frog stream over on Twitch. Later, noobs.